Hi class, today we are going to discuss estimation and hypothesis testing about the difference between two population means for small samples with equal and unknown standard deviations. In this case, we would be using the T distribution when we have two groups of sample drawn from two normally distributed population and when the sample size of the two groups are less than 30 and they are independent groups and when the standard deviation, the population standard deviation are unknown but they are assumed to be equal then we would be using the T distribution to conduct estimation and hypothesis testing. So far, we've tested the hypothesis and we've conducted estimation analysis on the difference of two population means when the sample size for both groups are large greater or equals to 30 then we would be using the normal distribution and today we learned that when the sample size is less than 30 and sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2 but they are unknown so we only have the values of S1 and S2, then we would be using the T distribution. To calculate the sample standard deviation of X bar 1 minus X bar 2, we would use the formula of the pooled standard deviation, um, which is called SP. So let's discuss the formula for SP. So the pool standard deviation for two samples is computed as the one here. Now this one looks complicated and it takes quite some time to calculate. However, in your final exam, all these formulas are provided so it's very easy to score. Okay, do not worry. And if you still remember when the sample size is less than 30, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 but it is unknown, then we would be using the T distribution. So the formula for your confidence interval is given as the one here. And if you still remember, when we use our T distribution, there would be some formula to calculate the degrees of freedom and it is given here. The degrees of freedom is calculated as N1 plus N2 minus 2. The test statistic is given as the one here which is similar for large samples except that now instead of the normal distribution we are using the T distribution. Okay class let's try out an example. The melting points of two galvanized steel used in an automotive application were investigated by melting 17 samples of each material. So we have um, two materials, one and two, and the sample size are the same, which is 17. So X bar 1 is given as 390, S1 is given as 5, X bar 2, 420, and S is 4. Okay. When do we know which distribution or which formula to be used? By referring to the statement here. Assume that the melting temperature is normally distributed with equal but unknown population standard deviation. So now we know that we need to use the T distribution because the sample size is small and the population standard deviation is equal but unknown. So question A. Conduct a 99% confidence interval for the difference between 
the two population means. So a 99% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 would be, I still remember it's x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus instead of the normal distribution, we are going to use the t distribution. And alpha here is 1%. So alpha over 2 would be 0 0.005. Now what about the degrees of freedom? The degrees of freedom is not provided in your final exam. So you have to memorize it. What's the formula again? It is N1 plus N2 minus 2. Now I have a technique that could help you out in your final exam. Look at the pool standard deviation formula. So the one here is actually your degrees of freedom. N1 plus N2 minus 2. So the degrees of freedom is N1 plus N2 minus 2 which is 17 plus 17 minus 2 which is 32. Okay, so we'll get this from the table in a short while. Multiplied by S x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Values of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 could be easily calculated. And this value could be found in the statistical table. So let's try this one out first. What's the value of t? 0.00532. So the degrees of freedom that we have here is 30 and then it jumps to 40. So what I would do is to round off to the nearest value. So round off 32 to 30 and 40 0.005 this is the answer 2.750 okay let's check the formula for the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 if you still remember we need to find the pool standard deviation so the pool standard deviation comes together with this formula. SB is equals to N1 minus 1 times S1 square plus N2 minus 1 multiplied by S2 square over n1 plus n2 minus 2. So this would be n1 minus 1 is 16 and s1 square will be 5 square plus n2 minus 1 is 16 s2 square is 4 square divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2 is 32 square root. Okay, so I invite everyone to use your calculator with me. You would get the answer as 4.5277. Next, to find the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2, the formula is sp square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. This gives us 4.5277. Multiplied by N1 is 17, N2 is 17, and 
we get it as 1.5530. And so, the 99% confidence in the world would be what was x1, x bar 1 and x bar 2, 390 and 420. 390 minus 420 plus minus the t is 2.75. Multiplied by S, X bar 1 minus X bar 2, which is 1.5530. And so our confidence interval is negative 34.2708 to 0.5530. Let's solve question B. Using the 5% significance level, so alpha is 5%, can you conclude that the mean temperature are different? So, the now would be mu1 minus mu2 equals to 0. The alternative is mu1 minus mu2 is not equals to 0. The next step would be the test statistics. We'll be using the distribution so if you still remember the test statistic is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 390 minus 420 getting the value from here minus mu 1 minus mu 2 so mu 1 minus mu 2 is 0 divided by the sample standard deviation of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 which is 1.5530 this gives us negative 19.3175 next step would be the rejection region and we have here alpha is 5% so because the alternative is not equals to we have a two tail test where alpha auto is 0 0.025 so now we need to check the t distribution table for alpha 0 0.025 and the degrees of freedom remains as 32 so we are gonna look for the degrees of freedom 30 which is closest to 32 and alpha is 0 0.025 so our t value is 2.042 this would be negative 2.042 and this would be 2.042 the next step is to compare the test statistics with the rejection region so t star definitely falls in the rejection region so we reject the null hypothesis let's go back to the question so the question says can you conclude that the mean temperature are different because we rejected the null hypothesis we could conclude that the mean temperature is different so I would write the conclusion as we can conclude that the mean temperature for melting both galvanized steel are different or the mean temperature are different. Okay class. I would like to bring your attention to the review exercise question number two. Okay, what does the question say? Okay, so two types of candies are suitable to decorate chocolate muffins. The melting points are important. It is known that sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2. And the sample size is small. X bar is provided. 
So which distribution would you use as the test statistics? Sample size is small. However, the population standard deviation is equal and the value is provided as 1.0. So in this case, when the sample size is less than 30 and the value for sigma 1 and sigma 2 is known and is provided in the question then we would definitely use the normal distribution right when the sample size is less than 30 sigma 1 is equals to sigma 2 but they are both unknown that means we only know the values of s1 and s2 then we would use the t distribution with the pool standard deviation that we discussed just now but when they are known sigma 1 and sigma 2 we would use the normal distribution there's also an important information that is missing from this paragraph which is the sampling distribution of the sample means are approximately normally distributed okay class thank you so much for watching the video keep on practicing your statistics during the mco and i'll see you in the next video